Hi Warwick, here's this week's address. I want to touch on a couple of topics that the um, City Council has been working on recently. Uh, this past Monday, they took the first steps in passing a moratorium on um, solar projects here in the city until we have an ordinance in place. It was a great decision by them. Uh, we worked together on it. It's going through first passage. Next month, we'll go, next month we'll go through the second passage. And for at least six months, no solar projects will be allowed to be considered in the city until we have an ordinance that deals with where we put them, uh, the standards, buffer zones, and all of that. Uh, another thing I was very happy that they approved um, we're buying another fire truck, another um, pumper truck. Uh, we have a great need for them. Because we, we have purchased, we have ordered um, a tower ladder truck, which is over a million dollars. The fire department doing a lot of work, wrote a grant, and we're getting money, federal money to, covers most of that. So we've taken the money that we've saved and we're, uh, we put it into buying another fire, an additional fire truck so we can replenish our fleet a little faster than we anticipated. Uh, these trucks are quite a ways from coming in, a year or so. Uh, but they're on the way. It's going to solve the problems we have now. We won't have to. We won't have to deal with borrowing from other municipalities, trucks breaking down, uh, huge repair bills, uh, and things of that nature. So uh, we're moving forward. It's taking some time, but we're doing it. The only update I have for you on the school bus situation is uh, the bus drivers are working. The two sides, I've heard from both of them, they're negotiating this week, hoping they come to a resolution. As you know, um, they reached a tentative agreement, but the membership um, rejected it. Uh, so they went back to the table. They're, both sides are working on it. Um, I'm really hopeful that we have a resolution. There's no strike, but we have to just stay tuned. And uh, again, I want to remind you, this isn't the school department. It's not the city, it's not the city council. The bus company is a private contractor that we hire. We go to bid and hire them. And there aren't a lot of them big enough to handle the job anyways. It's between them and their, their drivers in the union. So all we can do is sit here. We monitor the situation. Um, I've offered to help however we can, but you know we'll keep you up to date with any developments. I want to give you an update on the annex. Um, just a little background. Uh, We've always had the annex behind City Hall. You've probably seen that big, ugly old building. A few years ago, it got flooded. Um, when they started trying to repair it, we noticed, well, we didn't notice, the engineers noticed it was not structurally safe. We could no longer use that building. We have offices in a couple of different facilities, like the Buttonwoods um, Senior Center, the former Senior Center. We have an old schools. We have them all over the place. Um, what we're doing, we signed a, a lease agreement with um, AAA for the Sawtooth building, all office buildings are going to move over there, um, except for the clerk's office, Board of Canvas, and, and uh, Mayor's office. Yes, right, I don't get the new office. Um, work is underway. It's going very well over there, site work and interior work. Um, the annex, the asbestos abatement is just about done, and um, they're going to be proceeding with um, demolition of the building uh, very shortly, within the next couple of weeks. And then a lot of uh, talk about what's going to go on with the land back there, and we're going to get back to you on that. Things have been going well at McDermott Pool. Um, all the repairs we made, a lot of people are using it. We have a lot of happy people who get a lot of good reports. Um, the therapy pool, I don't know if everyone's aware of it, there is a therapy pool there. Uh, it's a much smaller pool. It's, um, uh, they call it the hot pool. But we're, we, that needed some extensive work too, and we're just now currently going out to bid on it. It's probably going to be about $50,000. We have to repair the surface. It was let go for a long time. Repair cracks, reline it. Um, we're going to make that one look as good as the big pool does. So in the next couple of months, we should be able to open that one. The city is continuing to strive to offer community events. People just seem to love them. Uh, we lost a lot due to the weather this past summer, but um, the ones we did have were very successful. Uh, last Friday night, the, the Chamber of Commerce um, co-hosted the event with the city, the fire and police department. DPW helped out. We were able to have a very successful movie night at Confredo Farms Athletic Field on Ben Street. Uh, had to be four or 500 people in attendance, the police told me. Um, everyone was well behaved. Everyone had a great time. It was great to get out there and see them. I visited for quite a while. Um, it's the kind of things we want to keep doing. This Saturday, the fire department is hosting a fire safety event at Station 8, which is the one next to the Hope on Post Road. Um, it's going to be from 
uh, the time will be up on the screen. Uh, there's going to be a lot of fun things for the kids and for a lot of things to hold your interest, so try to get out there. We're still talking about fireworks on New Year's Eve. We're trying to solve the logistics. It's not as easy as we thought or, you know, imagine. Um, we're still in between Rocky Point and uh, Oakland Beach. Rocky Point has a lot of challenges. There are no lights there, no facilities. So uh, we have the Recreation Department working with the Chamber of Commerce, and we're, we're going to try to do the event wherever it would work out best. We have to go out to bid for the fireworks. So stay tuned. As that develops, we'll let you know. We're nearing the end of October, and one of the best things about Halloween in the city of Warwick are so many wonderful families that put on these great Halloween displays. I, I don't think any other city has the amount of them we do. They're all fantastic. I'm here at um, Daniel's House of Halloween. Mike Daniels owns it. The reason I'm, I chose this one is because right near City Hall. I mean, they're all wonderful. We'll probably go to another one next week. Um, I'm going to spend the week, all of this week and the next week visiting as many of these as I can. Get out and see them. They're fantastic. These people are just so imaginative and so dedicated. A lot of them raise money for different charities. Uh, it's just fantastic. You'll see other families out there. It's a great thing. because We have great citizens at work. They do things like this. So we'll see you out at these displays. Uh, that's it for this week. We'll talk to you next week. <laughs>